So I'm here today traveling up to Martin Luther King Avenue and, and 10th Avenue um, on my quest for the whereabouts of wild tobacco. Grew up uh, with Pappy Carroll telling me stories about wild tobacco and always sending us on some wild goose chase for this wild tobacco like it was a snap or something uh, and never actually saw any. So um, I've decided that I really want to find out whether there is such a thing as wild tobacco and how I can get my hands on it. So that's where I'm going today. So I've gotten word about a horticulture expert here in Oklahoma City that may be able to shed a little light on the existence or myth of wild tobacco. So I'm coming here today to find out just a little bit more about whether there's any truth to that or not. So, we're gonna go right on in here uh, to Eckroat Seed Company uh, and see what we can find out. All right, so I'm coming in here to Eckroat's to see if I can find out if there really is such a thing as this wild tobacco. Hey, how you doing? I'm well, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. I was hoping you, you. Well, I was hoping you could help me. I've uh, been on this bit of a goose chase. Uh -huh. Growing up, my uncle told me these stories about how there was such a thing as wild tobacco. Mm -hmm. And he would have us looking for this like a snipe hunt. Right. We never found it. Don't know if it exists. And I heard you were the expert and really wanted to come see if you could tell me something about it. It does exist. Um, it's kind of funny because, oh, probably over the last 50, 60 years, they've taken this stuff and, ha and come, developed other cultivars that uh, are more suited for a garden. And, with, and they're very fragrant. Uh, uh, at Horn Seed Company years ago, we sold the plants. And uh, it's kind of funny because they'd come in asking for nicotinia, which Nicotiana is, is the correct pronunciation. But yeah, it, it exists. I'll show you here where, where we have it here. I've got some packets from Lake Valley Seed and all this is organic stuff. There's no, it's no GMOs or anything like that. So, back there where they were. There you go. So you can carry packets of seed here. People come in here and buy these. Yes. Would it, sure would it, would they ever grow wild on the side of the road? Is that? I'm sure they still do, but they're not, unless they were blooming, I'm not exactly sure how you would find them. So. Because it mixed in with other things that look kind of like it. So that when we were on vacation, a lot of times he would have us looking for this. Uh -huh. And we'd stop on the side of the road because he'd say, well, there's some is, we'd jump out and get out. A lot of times we'd end up with whelps or rashes or something like that. Do they cause whelps or rashes? I don't think this causes the whelp rash but especially eastern Oklahoma you got ticks chiggers and everything else that's probably where, where it's probably chiggers if you want to know the truth because when I was a kid I spent a lot of time over there myself so in the eastern part of the state yeah they're all over there. now there's some other things down that part of the country that I used to love my grandmother made muscadine jelly and the muscadines grow like crazy and they moved up to Oklahoma City in about 1940, 41. They was down in that country forever. And uh, uh, work, my granddad worked planing mills down there is what he did. And, and uh, it's kind of neat though. I, I miss going down there, but as a kid, I'd go down there and yeah, just so plan them out. So. It's, a, it's a pretty area and, and, uh, and I grew up down there and uh, lots of stories and, and my uncle, like I said, put us on wild goose chases, and so it's nice to know that finally we're able to find that's, this elusive that's plant. That's what it looks like. All right, well, I appreciate it very much. You're quite welcome. Thank you. So there you have it, finally an answer to the truth of wild tobacco.